Let's look at the formulas behind one-way ANOVA. Typically, we're going to let a computer do the calculations for us, but it's useful to know the meaning of some of these quantities. Recall that one-way ANOVA is a statistical method that tests the null hypothesis that k populations all have the same mean by comparing the variability between groups to the variability within groups. It's called analysis of variance, but it is a test on means. The end result is going to be an ANOVA table that looks like this. The names might change a little bit depending on the source. For instance, treatments is sometimes called group or between or things of this nature, and error might be called within or other quantities like this. But overall, the ANOVA table looks quite a bit like this. One of the most important quantities in the table is this F statistic. This F statistic is going to yield a p-value, and from that we're going to reach a conclusion. Let's take a look at the meaning of these different terms. We're going to let k represent the number of groups. x sub ij represent the jth observation in the ith group. x bar sub i represents the mean of the ith group. And there's going to be k of these because we had k groups. X bar with no subscript represents the overall mean, sometimes called the grand mean. This is simply the mean of all observations. If we took all of our observations, added them up, and divided by how many we had, we'd get our X bar. S sub i is going to represent the standard deviation of the ith group. N sub i represents the number of observations in the ith group. And we're going to let N be the sum of the sample sizes in all of those groups. So we're going to have N observations in total. Let's start with the total sum of squares. We're taking each observation, we're subtracting the overall mean, we're squaring it, and we're adding that up over all observations. You might notice that if we wanted the sample variance of all of our values, ignoring the fact that we had different groups, this would simply be the sum of squares total over n minus 1. So sum of squares total is related to the total variability of all of your data, ignoring the groups. The fundamental thing that is happening in analysis of variance is that the total sum of squares is partitioned into these two components. It's broken up into SST, sum of squares treatment I'm calling this, but you might see it as sum of squares group or sum of squares between. So this is the sum of squares between the groups. And for that we take, for each group, we take the mean in the group, we subtract that from your overall mean, we square that, multiply it by how many observations were in that group, and add it up over all groups. Now, a little loosely speaking, if our sample means are all very close together, then they're all going to be close to this x bar, and SST will tend to be small. If our sample means are very different from one another, then our x bar sub i's are going to be different from the x bars, and this quantity is going to get large. So if our sample means are very different from one another, this quantity is going to get large. It also depends on your sample sizes as well. Down here is our sum of squares error, which you might see sometimes as sum of squares residual or sum of squares within. And this is looking at the variability within the groups. SI squared is the variance in the ith group, and then we are simply multiplying that by the number of observations minus 1. If there is a lot of variability within the groups, then this quantity is going to tend to be large. And if there is very little variability within the groups, then this quantity is going to tend to be small. We said that sum of squares total was partitioned into those two components. And what we mean by that is that sum of squares total is going to be equal to sum of squares treatment plus sum of squares error. The sum of squares between plus the sum of squares within. And this also works for the degrees of freedom as well. Our degrees of freedom total is equal to the degrees of freedom for treatment plus the degrees of freedom for error. And this is one of the fundamental things that is happening in analysis of variance, is that we are partitioning the total sum of squares into these two components. Here's our ANOVA table again. Our degrees of freedom for treatment, that is the number of groups, minus 1. Our degrees of freedom for error, total number of observations, minus the number of groups.
under degrees of freedom total, simply n minus 1. Now notice here that the degrees of freedom for treatment plus the degrees of freedom for error add up to the degrees of freedom for total. Similarly, the sum of squares treatment plus the sum of squares error adds up to the sum of squares total. How large a sum of squares is depends on the degrees of freedom over here. It is a sum of squares. The greater the number of groups, say, the greater the sum of squares treatment would tend to be. And we take that into account for our mean square. In statistics, a mean square is the simply the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. So for us, our mean square treatment is simply going to be our sum of squares treatment over the degrees of freedom for treatment, which is k minus 1. And our mean square error is simply going to be our sum of squares error divided by the degrees of freedom for error, which is n minus k. And that's what this mean square column represents. One thing to note before we move on to our f statistic is that mean squared error is the pooled variance, s p squared. One way ANOVA assumes that the populations all have the same variance. So the mean square error is pooling all those individual sample variances together from the different groups and coming up with one overall estimate of the within group variability. The F statistic is a very important quantity in our ANOVA table. The F statistic is the ratio of mean squares, mean square treatment to mean square error. Let's take a bit of a closer look at that. The F statistic is mean square treatment over mean square error. Now, if the null hypothesis and the assumptions of one-way ANOVA are true, then this test statistic will have an F distribution. And since we had mean square treatment in the numerator, the numerator degrees of freedom are going to be the degrees of freedom for treatment, which is simply k minus 1. And we had error in the denominator, so the degrees of freedom for the denominator in our f are simply going to be the degrees of freedom for error, which is n minus k. It can be shown mathematically that if the null hypothesis is true, mean square treatment and mean square error are independent estimators of the same quantity. Sigma squared are the true within group variance. If the null hypothesis is false, mean square treatment will tend to be bigger than mean square error, and the test statistic will tend to be large. Our F test statistic is mean square treatment over mean square error. If the null hypothesis is true, these two things estimate the same quantity, and loosely speaking, we're going to expect to get an F statistic somewhere in the neighborhood of 1. The F statistic will have an F distribution, and the F distribution has a mean and a median that depends on the degrees of freedom. But a little loosely speaking, the mean and the median are close to 1. But if the null hypothesis is false, it can be shown that mean square treatment, which is the quantity in the numerator, will tend to be larger than mean square error, which is the quantity in the denominator. And the F statistic will tend to get large. And so in one way ANOVA, for given degrees of freedom, the greater the value of the F statistic, the greater the evidence against the null hypothesis. So if I were to draw out my F distribution here, and let's say we got an F statistic that's there. Let's say my observed value of F, which I'm going to call F obs here, for my observed value of F, the P value is the probability of getting our observed value of our F statistic, or something even farther out in the tails. And that is going to be our p-value in one way ANOVA. I show how to find that p-value in another video. And in a different video, I work through an example of one way ANOVA.